All right. Um, so right now, I guess I'm kneeling because I'm like thinking I'm gonna be decapitated if I'm standing, but I'm not because I positioned the camera that way. So, anyways, um, some of you guys have uh, forearm and wrist issues that you have voiced to me, and I want to go ahead and cover that really quick. Um, so. Forearms and wrists are a little bit funky, guys. Um, so as we talked about when we were talking about anatomy, we have uh, four classes of muscles that uh, go through our forearms, right? That are going to play into uh, the things that are going into our hands. We don't have a lot that goes into our fingertips that actually works on this. All this is happening down here at the wrist. We mostly just have tendons and little pulleys down here. Um, so the thing is, is that, um, you know, we, we can go through four different types of motion except for your thumb. Your thumb can go through uh, adduction and abduction, um, but we have pronation and supination, so we can internally and externally rotate here. We have uh, flexion and we have extension. And those are the four different ranges of motion that we can go into with um, our wrists. And um, I might as well, because I have it here, I might as well go through this uh, in multiple ways so you guys can see what we're doing. Um, so one of them, I'm just standing on this, guys, and I have, I can change my weight based on how much tension is on here, um, and, I, and also the cable that I'm using. So I want to be really, really honest here, because when you guys are doing this, um, people tend to use their biceps and triceps to compensate, right? So when I'm doing a wrist curl, for example, right, a little slack there, um, I want to come down here. And you see how I'm hanging on my fingertips, right? I go out as far as I can without dropping my weight, whether it's a dumbbell, whether it's this, and then I'm going to curl in, and then I'm gonna come all the way up, and then curl down. I find with what I just did now, I'm gonna lean back a little bit, um, right? What I was finding was that there was too much compressive force in here uh, within, behind my wrist. So coming all the way through that range of motion. I usually do this with dumbbells, guys. So it's gonna be exactly the same concept. Uh, my husband has the dumbbells right now. So again, I go on the fingertips, I curl in, and I come into the flexed, uh, flexed position. Now, um, I didn't mean to shout that. Go uh, heavy. Uh, so, to work on your extensors, right? It's exactly the opposite movement, right? I'm going all the way down and I'm curling all the way back, okay? So, generally speaking, we are dominant this way, right? Coming in, into that flexion rather than extension. So our, you'll find that um, where I might be able to do this just fine with 10 pound, a 10 pound dumbbell, when I come here, I might be down to five. I might be at two and a half pounds. Seriously, guys, this fatigues really, really fast. Now, your, um, your flexors or your uh, supinators and pronators guys um, look we're gonna do this way okay so again I might actually just use the uh, the handle for the barbells I'm gonna hold on to the threaded part I'm not gonna even have any weight on here you might put a two and a half uh, pound plate out here. You can use a bread roller for this if you have it. Uh, just because uh, it's not these aren't particularly strong muscles that we're working here but we can go through pronation and supination. And the reason why I'm holding out here, guys, is that same issue with leverage, right? So this is the, the center of the wheel, this is the fulcrum. Out here, the heavier the weight is out here, the more torque I have to put in on this side. Um, we don't wanna really, really overwork this too much um, as far as um, uh, how much weight we use. Again, this is not strong, and, and because of the length of this lever, guys, you know, uh, the longer the lever is and how further out the weight is, the more resistance I'm going to have. Now. You don't have dumbbells, maybe. Um, so, what I might do, and I have to think about how I want to do this. Um, I think that the way that I would do this, actually, is something along these lines where I'm actually tying my band onto this, right? So, and the reason why I'm doing it this way, guys, is because I don't want it rolling down and snapping my hand. If I just have the ring on there, once I get vertical, I'm going to have issues. Um, and again, the other side, you can dock however you want to, whether it's docked straight down, whether it's um, off to a pull. Um, you probably don't want to have a whole lot of lateral force into this, but I can have this guy underneath. Again, this is not very much weight. I can just come up the center and come back out, okay? And because it's an elastic, it's actually going to get tighter on there, and it's going to be less like the slide. So I'm working one side, right, 
Boom. And again, you guys see that right here, my stick and my cord are pointing in the same direction. So I have no resistance on my pronator supinator here. Uh, in this case, it would be pronator, right? So, you know, it's limited, right? So if I was able to come out here more, aha, and I can actually feel that resistance is a lot more in that position. Now, right, same deal. Come out this way. Uh, I'm thinking about this wrong. So I'm here, here, it'd be further out this way, I think. It's funny when I, when I, so the thing is, is I usually do this with empty dumbbells. So it's not, this is, this is new to me, but I'm here, boom, to there, down, and there. Now, what about the rest of the range of motion? Well, I can hold it, right? Same deal. Now I, I'm getting that further range of motion. Um, I can do that on the cross side too. I'm going to hold it a little bit higher up, right? So that I don't go into that parallel, right? And I can work that full range of motion. Um, so I can already feel everything's fatigued just from showing you guys that. Um, so I would not do this on a pull day. So right now our pull days are going to be Wednesdays and mixed in on Fridays. So this would be something that I would do probably on Sunday and uh, or Saturday, Monday or something along those lines. Um, yeah, because Saturday, Monday, because we're not working so much on the pulling movements on Fridays. We're it's blended in so we're not going to be overworked there but what you guys are going to find is that if you really really work on especially this motion this curling up motion um when you guys get into doing pulling exercises we're doing an isometric here right we are pulling our wrist to this hammer position and so all this and especially because again the muscles in here are what's going to actually turn and close your hand right so all this becomes really overactive when we start to do curling exercises when we start doing rowing exercises so what you'll find is that this will get swollen and cramp up on you and then you'll become extremely weak in your grips right so if you're doing that if you're finding that guys for one you're probably squeezing your handles right you want to hook your handles you don't want to squeeze them right um, you might be bringing your wrist into this curled position that's going to uh, keep you in that really, really shortened position. It's going to also put more leverage on that, right? If I'm in a neutral position, I'm just hanging on that joint, which I know I said don't do that, but because we're gripped, our muscle is taking that, that, uh, that uh, weight there. But once I go here, guys, you see I've got a, uh, a lever here, and my line's going to be pulling out this way, so it's trying to pull my wrist back to this neutral position. Um, so if I'm doing this, I'm actually causing my forearms to work harder, and that's one reason why a lot of people find that their grips uh, give out halfway through the workouts. So we really want to be making sure that whatever wrist position that we're holding, we're keeping that nice and neutral. We're keeping that nice and strong. So um, I hope this is helpful for you guys. Um, if you guys are finding that it's aggravating, um, whatever's going on in your wrists or in your forearms, let me know. Um, if it's aggravating something in your grip, let me know. Uh, because there are other things that might be going on there, guys, especially like overuse injuries. Like if you guys are finding, okay, I feel crampy or I, I feel like it just gets tight super fast, it might be that you need to do some self myofascial release in there. And, um, you could use your regular foam roller, right? Um, they have ones that are like that big around that you could be using. Um, you could also, just give yourself a damn massage, right? That's all it is. So I'm just going here at a glacial pace. I'm putting some weight here. I'm probably gonna have my arm down on something so it's not engaged. And I'm just kind of going through there and I'm pausing on any place that feels tight. Um, if you wanna go ahead and go through both sides, you can do it that way as well. You can use the lacrosse ball if you wanna go shape on that. Um, I usually put it down on the table and I'll put my palm up at the top and I'll roll through that. Um, but it can be a little bit finicky, a little bit, uh, it will wanna run away from you a little bit. Um, so use whatever you guys have um, to use a red roller. It's a true fact. Um, so get creative. Hell, actually, this handle that probably would that would actually probably be a pretty effective uh, roller for this. So another option there. So whatever whatever you guys are using, um, whatever's going on here, uh, let me know what's going on. Make sure. Um, and I will see what I can do to uh, help to address that a little bit more directly um, if this doesn't help. So that's what I got for you guys, um, and I will see you guys soon.